All right, we're in AP Calculus, AB Lesson 2-7. Today's date, which you should have on your papers already, is September 25th, 2020. Of course, it doesn't like writing right there for whatever reason. Um, our objective today, Chris, go. Yep, so it builds off the continuity test, which you guys have seen before. Let's go ahead and review that. So... My question for you, is this function f right here, which is defined by this piecewise function, um, is that continuous at the suspect point 2? It tells you x equals 2 there. They should all match up. What do you do? Remind me. How do I work with continuity tests? Fiona? Yeah, so you set the, the left piece, you set that equal to the right piece, and if there are three pieces, sometimes there are, you also set it equal to that third piece, which is actually the, I'll just call it the height. But sometimes the height is already included in the left or the right, like it is for the right piece. In this right piece, it has the equal to sign with the greater than or equal to, so you don't really have to do it since it's already included. Um, by the way, we guys, we know this really well, but I should label here suspect point suspect point is 2 because it matches here, here, and it should match up here as well. Yeah, so we set the left, which is 4x minus 1. We set that equal to the right, which is x squared plus 2. And we could set it equal to the height, which is also x squared plus 2, but that's a waste of time. And Fiona, did you say what to do after that, or should I call on someone else? Say it one more time. There it is. It's hard to hear over this thing. Sub in the 2. So everywhere you see an x, substitute a 2. So it's now, I should maybe leave the same color, 4 times that 2 minus 1 is equal to 2 quantity squared plus 2. I'll fill that in with a cool color to make it pop out. Pop, pop. All right. Um, Andrea, can you simplify this for us, please? Plus two and one more step, Andre. Teflon, what can you conclude? There it is. And I need some room to. I'm just going to type it. It's probably faster for me. Uh, yeah, I think a size 18 won't work. Not continuous. Why? Because failed the. Continuity test at x equals 2. All right, there it is. Um, you guys should also know the definition of the continuity test, the formal definition, um, in case this turns into a free response question. I know for all of unit 2, 3, 4, and etc. are going to be multiple choice until we get to the second half of the unit or second half of the class. Um, but here's the formal definition that you should have for your notes. And I wish I could write it up above here. Um, Chris, do you mind just kicking out the doorstop so we can hear better? So it's the limit of f of x as x approaches whatever that suspect point is, um, in this case it's 2, 2 from the left, should equal the limit of that same f of x as x approaches 2 from the right, which should be equal to f of 2, which means the height at 2. That is the formal definition. I simplified it and I just said left equals right equals height because it's kind of tedious to write that out, but you definitely need to know it for future situations. All right, can you guys give me a quick fist of five? How well can you do if a function is continuous? The work that we just did right here. Five, 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 and five. Awesome, good foundation. Let's do the differentiability test. Now I'm asking, is f differentiable at x equals two? And the answer, since it's the same exact question is no. Why? I don't even have to, as long as this matches up, I can kind of ignore everything and just say, hey, no, it doesn't. It's not differentiable. But who can tell me why? It's based on an old definition. What does it mean to be differentiable? Give me the definition, flashcard definition. Differentiable means there are no, one, two, three, no sharp corners, 
Holes is a type of, yeah, so discontinuity, sharp corner, and finally, say it louder. A close vertical asymptote is a type of um, discontinuity. Vertical asymptote looks like that. I'm thinking of something that looks like this. It's a vertical tangent, yeah. Okay, so one of those this has. I'll name them off again, and you guys can name them off in your heads, I guess, with me. We're doing discontinuity, sharp corners, vertical tangents. This function has one of those things, Fiona. Discontinuity, so it can't be differentiable. It, like we proved it up here, it is discontinuous. At this point, x is equal to 2. So I'll put in our notes here right away. We can tell it isn't. Why? Because not continuous. But let's go ahead and say we didn't know that. Maybe it was continuous. How would you do the differentiability test? You'd do the following. You'd actually have to take the derivative. Do f prime of x. So if it was continuous, then you'd say, okay, well, f prime of x is equal to a piecewise function. And I take the derivative of the left piece right there. Take the derivative of the right piece, write it underneath it. So derivative of 4x minus 1, Fiona. Four. So we say four, and then on the same interval where x is less than two. Four, for x is less than two. Um, Andrea, derivative of the right piece. Two x. There it is. Two x when x is greater than or equal to two. These just kind of always get copied over. And I'm being very formal about this. If this was um, a multiple choice question, again, you can skip as many steps as you can to go fast. Okay, and then again, you do the same thing. Left equals right equals the actual, I can't say height now because it's the derivative. When you take the derivative of height, it turns into slope. So I should say left equals right equals slope. So I'm going to write down formally what it is because you need the formal definition and the informal. So formally, I'll do formally um, underneath. So I'll say left equals right equals slope. Not height anymore because we took the derivative. And what does the formal definition look like? Again, it's the limit of not f of x, but f prime of x because we took the derivative. And again, as x approaches whatever the suspect point is, so 2 in this case from the left, that needs to be equal to the same limit of f prime of x as x approaches that suspect point 2 from the right. It needs to be equal to the slope. And just as a reminder, what is slope again? What should I write here for slope? Chris, you want to take a shot at it? It's not f of 2. It's now f prime of 2. Exactly. It's, I mean, look at this. It's almost the exact same definition that we had all the way up here. The only difference is you just tick on these primes. Prime, 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 and it's now the differentiability test. So once you know the continuity test, which you guys all gave me fist of fives, five out of five, all you do is slap on some primes and now it's a differentiability test. But it, in order to pass the differentiability test, you need to pass both the continuity test and the differentiability test. All right, so let's go ahead and just pretend that it was continuous and see if it would pass the differentiability test. Um, how do I do that? It's even easier now because the functions are easier. It's the same process. If you did it last time, so I want to give it to someone else. What do you actually do now? Go ahead and plug it in. Remember the comparison. Up here, what did we do? We said 4x minus 1 is equal to x squared plus 2. We're doing the same thing now with f prime. So what do we do? Andrea. Two, and then you're already doing the substitution, which is awesome. Two times that suspect point two to see if it's differentiable. All right. And I, yeah, it's very clearly four is equal to four. I wanted to do that in a different color. Four is equal to four. So if it was continuous, then it would have been differentiable also. 
but since it failed the continuity test, we still say, no, it's not. Cool, and we have something on the back. All right, find the value of the variables that will make f both continuous and differentiable everywhere. So again, we're doing two tests. Let's go ahead and do the continuity test first. Someone help me fill that in. I want to hear from either Teflon or Chris for this one. Continuity test, go. Okay. There it is, bx, oops, bx squared minus one. Chris, what do I do after that? Have a hit up on the board if you need it. Something to do with that suspect point. We haven't used it yet. We we substitute in the suspect point for x. So plugging it in, plugging it in, doing the substitution. But Chris, I'm not done with you yet. Go ahead and simplify. Yep, keep going. Plus one, is that what you said? Like that? Uh, there's a tiny error. If you can't find it, you can call it someone else too. All right, raise your hand, help him out. Chris, you get to call someone. B minus one. Why B minus one instead of negative B squared? But there it is. All right. Is that okay, Chris? Oh yeah. All right. Um, and then we can simplify this a little bit, but we're kind of stuck because there's no way to solve for unknowns until we have a second equation. The number of unknowns that you have, and this is just a fundamental rule of linear algebra, the number of unknowns that you have should at least match the number of equations. If you have three unknowns, you need three equations. If you have three unknowns and you have five equations, that's plenty. You have more than enough equations. So we have two unknowns. We need two equations. Where are we going to get our second equation from? No, oh, actually, we can solve for this one, too. Yeah, and you're right. Um, but someone, let's go ahead and solve this one. I forgot that we could actually do that one. We can solve for A. What do we do to both sides? Fiona? Yep. And what is A equal to then? Perfect, yep. Divide both sides or multiply both sides by negative one. Either works and A is equal to one. This is a rare circumstance where that actually does work. Typically what you'll have on the homework and especially the uh, pretest and test is you'll have an equation that you just can't solve. You need to have two equations and then you go back to your algebra one skills and do substitution, elimination, whatever have you. All right. And as Fiona was talking about earlier, we need to take the derivative and take the differentiability test. But I'll let someone else do that. All right. So... Andrea did it last time, taking the derivative of the left piece, and then Teflon did the right piece. So, Chris, you need to take the derivative of the left piece. Um, of the x piece? Yes, please. Um, okay, so the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 3x is 3. Oh, the derivative of ax is a, exactly. So come down here and say this is going to be a when x is oops, when x is less than negative one. Again, the derivative of b is just a number, so it's like the derivative of five. It's a constant; it goes away, so we don't have to worry about the b. Um, and we'll give it a Teflon. Uh, derivative of b x squared minus one. 
it is 2bx, and that's when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, Andrea, help us out. What do we do from here? There it is. You already plugged in the x. You substituted our suspect point in for our x. Uh, Fiona, can you help us simplify and solve? negative 2b, and therefore all right, and then box both of your variables. a is 1, b is negative a half. 